Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And um, this is an article from SiliconAngle.com, and it's been dealing with um, this, uh, you know, these alerts that we've been hearing from the FBI concerning <clears throat> what they're calling Chinese hackers. And they seem, you know, pretty concerned about this. Uh, the whole scenario here is, well, let me read the headline. FBI warns Chinese hackers malware pre-positioning pre efforts at a fever pitch. And basically, um, malware is short for malicious software, which is just like, them writing some type of software that can, you know, uh, use, you know, or mess up your infrastructure or all of your technologies and, you know, manipulate it in ways that it wasn't designed to be manipulated in. And the thing that makes it so dangerous is that a lot, you know, like a good portion of everything here, especially in America, <laughs> in America is, um, it's been automated, you know, like it, like the electrical system, like anything that's, you know, uh, running, okay, and it's uh, very efficient, obviously, you're not going to have people do it. You know, you do something, you see that, oh, this is a good idea, you know, then let's, let's build some software that can automatically do it for us, right? All these machines that work, software tells them what to do. So your water supply, your electric grid, all the things that are hooked up to it, if they, you know, as it says, they, they, they position the, the malware in different areas, this is why they're afraid that it can cripple the U.S. infrastructure because majority of the U.S. the U.S. infrastructure is built, you know, um, to to use software to make life easier. So if they can disrupt that, they can disrupt a lot of people's lives. Okay, and just like they showed you in the movie last year, uh, leave the world behind. And as we always warn you about uh, predictive programming, okay, and the revelation of the method, they show you what they plan to do before they do it. OK, but as the scriptures also warn us, this is going to come, you know, like sudden destruction to a lot of people because they're not paying attention. Federal Bureau of Investigation Director Christopher Wray put the spotlight on the threat posed by Chinese state backed hackers during a security summit held over the weekend. Speaking at the Munich uh, Secur Security Conference on Sunday, Ray said that hacking groups, hacking groups, malware, Prepositioning operations against critical infrastructure have reached a fever pitch. Prepositioning is a term for a situation where hackers embed so, uh, malware into a network with the uh, the goal of carrying out cyber attacks in the future. So it's kind of like sleeper cells on a digital level. Okay, so once they've positioned it in all the different places they want, you you know it, this becomes very dangerous, right? Because when they say, all right, it's time for the go ahead, like they have leverage over you. It's time for the go ahead. New York could get hit and then they could take out the whole West Coast. So, you know, they hit one side, you focusing on this. Oh, shit, what's going on here? This is not working. And then they come and hit another side. And the thing about, the, uh, um, you know, when you read about like the Moabites or the modern day Chinese and even in the in the ancient world, they they they're very strategic. OK. They're not going to just attack you just because they can. They, they wait for the perfect opportunity. Okay, they don't, they don't like to strike twice. So they'd rather not strike at all until they get that perfect opportunity so that they, you know, take your ass out. Okay, the majority of them live by that, you know, um, that mindset of, you know, you don't show mercy to your enemies. So just because they, like, they may have, uh, pre-positioned malware in different areas, but it doesn't mean that just because they have the power now, all of a sudden they're going to do it. They'll wait, they'll wait for the right moment. Maybe they'll say, hmm, if we can take out the electric grid, their heaters, water supply, you know, a lot of, you know, factories that manufacture all of these things, they are all, they need, they need power to function. So maybe we'll wait till a very cold time, the dead of winter, and then we'll shut this shit off. <laughs> that that would be very dangerous you know they, they're very like i said strategic with it okay and it isn't until 
something goes wrong that people then realize how many dependencies there really were, right? Like you, ne like it doesn't occur to you when, when people talk about the lights going out, what people mostly think of is darkness. Oh shit, the power's out. My, my, you know, my, uh, I don't know, it's, it's dark, you know, TV's not working, phone is not working. Like the immediate things that they use are what they think of. But did it occur to you that Yes, your your home appliances are not working, okay? But almost everything is electronic. When you go to the gas station to try and pump gas into your car, and it, it tells you, you know, card or cash or whatever the case is, you see how when you're pumping the gas, there's numbers on the screen right there? That's digital. That means there's, there's electricity flowing through there to cause that to happen. So if there's no electricity, you can't pump gas, okay? And like I said, they've automated a lot of things to make your life easier. These factories, a lot of these factories have big ass machines, those like robotic looking arms that and then they have the assembly line and they've, the majority of them have replaced people with machines. And guess what? Machines need what? Power in order to run. So, you, OK, your immediate home appliances stop, but factories which mass produce things that then get brought to your area your what your stores and your uh, grocery stores and all different kinds of stores those factories can't function because the the machines doing the work are i mean the, the conveyor belt itself is going to stop okay the assembly line is going to stop and once that stops that's a that's a break in the chain of supplying products to you so it's not just the stuff that you're going to see at home or the streets, but eventually your car is going to run out of gas and so you can't pump more in there. If you have an electric car, that, how are you going to charge that, right? The factories that are mass producing these things, whether it's medical supplies or packaging food or whatever the case is, guess what? That stops. The farms, the farms, not everything on those farms, they're, they're not Amish, okay? <laughs> so there's going to be something that depends on electricity or some form of a digital system or whatever the case is. If the trucks run out of gas and they can't pump gas in there, well, guess what? They're done too. And if this is an EMP, God forbid they were to just launch an EMP attack or strike on this place. I mean, this malware is bad enough, but an EMP, well, you can just forget about it. Okay, so it's more than just darkness. It's more than just the power going up. But you don't realize how many things can actually go wrong. You know, that's why it's called a domino effect. People really see like the first three dominoes and then, they, oh shit, that's so bad. They, they don't think past to like maybe the 13th domino and how that might be even more detrimental for you. So it isn't until you try to go do something. It's like when you, when you leave your phone at home and then the whole day, it's like you realize how many things become much harder to do now that you don't have your phone. You're running late. You go to check what time the train. Oh, you don't got your phone. Ah, shit. I'm going to be late. Let me call my job and tell them, oh, don't got your phone. Oh, man. How many minutes? What's the time? I don't. I didn't buy a watch because I always use my phone, but I don't have my phone. Hmm. I'm feeling kind of lost. Let me check the GPS. Oh, right. Don't got your phone. So now you're starting to realize, yo, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this because I don't have my phone. So anyway, let's keep on going. Um, where we at? In his remarks, Ray drew attention to a Chinese state-backed hacking group uh, tacked as Vault Typhoon by researchers. The group's activities were first publicly uh, detailed by Microsoft Corp. Last March, according to the tech giant, hackers carried out cyber attacks against critical infrastructure organizations in Guam and other parts of the U.S., and a lot of these things, too, are they're trying, they try to keep it under wraps, right, because they try to avoid panic of the people. Because if word gets out that you have Chinese, <coughs> or not even just Chinese, I'm sure there's probably others as well, but these hackers that are that have access to pretty dangerous, you know, areas in the U.S. infrastructure already, people would, would, would kind of bug out about that. You, you'd see TikTok videos and, I mean, videos left and right on, on what this means and, and all of that, even though there's some now. But if they were actually to tell you how how dangerous this actually is, you know, like they try to warn you without sounding the alarm too much. But if they were to do that, they'd have a 
you know, a panicking society. So they try to, you know, keep it, you know, like surface level a little bit. But now you're starting to see that either they're trying to set up another narrative or this thing is getting so bad that they're like, yo, <laughs> you know, we can't keep it too surface level now. OK, let me uh, jump through this a little bit. Microsoft determined that one of Volt Typhoon's goals was pursuing development of capabilities that could disrupt communications between the U.S. and Asia in the event of a crisis. According to the company, hacking the hacking group mostly used so-called living of the land tactics to carry out cyber attacks. In a living off, living off the land campaign, hackers attempt to compromise an organization systems using the existing leg legitimate software installed on those systems. And mind you, these things are pretty like complex <laughs> in order for you to because these the, like the U.S. infrastructure, the, the technology that's built by these companies, they hire like top. I mean, people who've been doing this for years, like 30 years, 40 years. So whether it's cybersecurity or just like valid and, and strong software, they've they've done a really good job of it. So in order for you to be to be able to hack that and manipulate it, it's not just knowing how to hack. You have to be good at it. You know, if there are certain things you need to do that needs to remain undetected, you have to really be able to be, you know, good at that. Or else, guess what? They're going to catch you. They're going to find out what you're doing, where you are, where you're from, all of that. Okay, so this isn't like some child's play stuff. Um, last month, the Justice Department and the FBI announced that they had disrupted a botnet Volt Typhoon used to supply to support its activities. The botnet compromised several hundred breached Soho or small office home office routers located in the U.S. The hackers used the compromised devices to try and mask the malicious traffic generated by their cyber attacks. And then it goes on and on and on. Um, let me read this last part right here. We are laser focused on this as a real threat and we're working with a lot of partners to try and identify it. Anticipated and disrupted, Ray said. I'm sober and clear minded about what we're up against. We're always going to have to be kind of on the balls of our feet. So you have them worried about China, China, uh, I mean, China, Chinese cyber threats. You have, I think they said over 10 million people have already, 10 million illegal immigrants have been, have entered the country um, since Biden came into office. You know, which this goes over a lot of people's heads, but they always set each other up, okay? Trump came in there. He was so, first off, first off, first off, the same people <laughs> or a, a good portion of people that said Trump got to go, they said, we're going to put Biden in there because, not because we care about what Biden has to say, but he's not, he, anybody but Trump. That was like the mindset when, during the last election, anybody but Trump, right? And the goal is to, to sort of like throw the alley-oop up for the next party. So Trump went in there. He was such a monster. Everybody says we want him out. Put Biden in there. Biden didn't have to do much work. You know, he didn't have to pitch so many. He just, look, I, hey, I'm not Trump. And everybody claps their hands. Yes, put him in there. Okay. So he comes up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, you try to tell people shit. They don't want to hear shit. Now he starts fucking shit up. He goes, fucks up an Afghanistan situation. He comes up. He, I mean, he's just, he's just messing <laughs> shit up left and right. So, but so that now people are like, yo, this guy got to go. <laughs> so now guess what? They want Trump back. So they set up the, the floor for each other. They come in there, they speaking all these smooth things and they do things so bad that you're just like, please, anybody but this guy. And guess what? There's only one other party or one other main side that you're going to go to. And just like that, they, they play you like Batman. This side, that side, this side, that side. Meanwhile, they're all working towards a common goal. No matter what it looks like on the, on the surface level. Anyway, this is the book of Second Ezra chapter 15. Uh, and I'm going to start at 1 and jump down. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. Now, who are the people of the Lord? The children of Israel. OK, so the Lord commanded us to speak into their ears. Now we do it by these lessons, the words of prophecy. And what are the main prophecies? Well, the, the, the MOTB, right? The CHIP, 
being implemented and made mandatory, World War III, amongst many other things, famines, pestilences, you know, the breakdown of, of society. And a, and a part of that is going to include that the, the result of these threats, these cyber threats, which I will put in thy mouth, say, if the Lord, right? So it's not like you come and make things up. You speak according to the words that the Lord has, you know, set us up to speak. Verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And that's why we have them today. Now, I want to jump down to the point here, which is in verse uh, yeah, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This Egypt is referring to America. Okay, the modern day Egypt. Like this place is referred to spiritually as Egypt. Okay. Verse 11, but I will bring them, right, his people, starting with his elect. Because the whole nation ain't going to make it on the first go around. That's, that's not happening. You already got, you got women roasting their children in ovens. You think the Most High is going to come and deliver them? No, he's getting ready to roast them in the oven. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. And that's when he delivers us. And smite, here's the key part, smite Egypt, which is America, with plagues as before. And will destroy all the land thereof. This never happened to ancient Egypt. The, the land of Egypt is still there today. The Lord is not going to destroy that land. He, the land that he's going to destroy is America. Now, what was one of the plagues that the Lord smote Egypt with? Darkness. Thick darkness. Darkness so thick that if there was a light right in front of you, you couldn't see it. Okay. Now, in this time, the Lord doesn't have to bring a, a, a thick, dark cloud to cause darkness. Okay. He can, but he doesn't have to. He can put the spirit on these people here, right? These Chinese hackers or whoever. And all they'd have to do is really just shut down the, the grid or better yet, or worse yet, hit this place with an EMP and all forms of electronic. I mean, there are some uh, preventative measures. Okay. But that's not really widely accessible to the public. And majority of people don't even know about it. But for the most part, all electronics get shut down. That's lights, cars, anything that uses batteries, power, it's gone. Okay, you got darkness right then and there. See, the Lord does things, you know, according to the times. In the ancient world, the Lord might send locusts. He might send, a, you, know, uh, you know, he might cause a drought to where, you know, you have the famines and so on and so forth. Today... And that would be like natural disasters, right? Today, the Lord can just say, all right, well, I'm going to bring a famine, but I don't need to do it the way I did it back then. You know what? I'm going to just have these people who, these elites, uh, purposely destroy the food supply. Eventually, it'll lead to the famine. It'll lead to the same outcome. Okay? But nevertheless, as the Lord said, he's going to smite this place with plagues as before. And one of those plagues was darkness. Darkness is coming. Okay, the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. And as the scriptures say in 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians, 5th chapter. Let me just confirm that. 1st or 2nd, let's take a look. Maybe it's 2nd. Nope, 1 Thessalonians. 5, and specifically here in verse 3, right? For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And the interesting thing about this is, you had a time period not too long ago where there was, you know, the whole C-19 demic, and people were on their guard, and they're back to sleep again, <laughs> you know? So it's just like, it goes to show you that, you know, these the scriptures talk about scourges being sent for amendment, but they're not going to turn from their wicked ways, all right? They need a permanent reset. And that's what the time of Jacob's trouble is going to do. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Recha Kodash. And until next time, Shalom.